So we're going to be working on two things here. We're going to be working on deferred gross profit over a two-year span and also concentrating on the income statement portion, which is the equity and income subsidiary, uh, which is impacted by a number of different things. And we'll also be reviewing the investment account here and what builds towards the final balance. So let's work on deferred gross profit. Uh, we can't presume that the gross profit percent would be the same in 2014 as it is in 2015. So let's see what it is. So the sales between the two companies in 2014 was 40000 And the sales in 2015 were 50000 All right, now what was the cost to this uh, person that was selling it. All right, so that was 24,000 in 2014 and 28,000 in 2015. So you have to be able to pull that data out of the story. Who's the buyer and what did they pay and who's the seller and what was their cost? And then the gross profit is the difference between the sales price and the cost. And then getting the percent, you take gross profit divided by sales. So let's see, it was 40% in the first year and 44% in the second year. Okay. So in 2014, we would take the unsold inventory and multiply it times the gross profit percent to figure out what would be deferred. All right, so let's see. How much is unsold at the end of 2014? 10,000. And that times gross profit percent is the amount of gross profit that's in the ending inventory that can't be recognized until it's sold to an outside party, which is presumably in the next year, which is 2015. And what is the ownership percent? Um, they own 30%, so let's take 30% of that. So this would be a good time to freeze the frame and see if you can finish 2015. So it, in 2014, we would have this, um, if this was two th the T account for 2014, we would have this credit in the investment account. And then in 2015, we would debit the investment account to show it reversing. So that's what's really new in this exercise. Okay, so what was unsold at the end of 2015? 20,000. Okay, multiply that times the gross profit percent in that year and then times the 30%. So now let's record what would be reported in the income statement as income from equity from subsidiary or equity income from subsidiary. So we need our 30% of their net income. So 90,000 times our 30%. Got an extra zero in there. There we go. They give us the amortization. I'm going to go ahead and use minus here just to emphasize the math here. So that would reduce the 27. And then the deferral from last year would actually be an addition. We removed it last year. We can now put it back in. And then this year's deferral is a reduction. And then we can add that all up. And so what would be reported in the income statement net for equity and income of subsidiary would be the 16,560. So let's kind of put this into the um, T account just to kind of reinforce everything. The opening balance they gave us is the 335. All right, we calculated that our percent of their net income and there wasn't a dividend. Oh, there was a dividend. Hold on. They paid dividends of 30000 and we get 30% of that. And 
and then they told us there was 9,000 amortization associated with this. And now we need the reversal. So the reversal is going to be a debit to the account and a credit to income. And then the deferral is a credit to the account and a debit to income. And then we can calculate here, of course. Add up all the debits. Minus all the credits. And we get the ending balance in the uh, T account. So there you go, ready for the next one.